Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about Revit and Dynamo and I'm going to show you how I, how I use Dynamo and its uh, scripting and automation uh, possibility uh, capability, I'll say, uh, to create some uh, some parameters from uh, different values that I was inputting for uh, room area and occupancy type calculations. Um, so here's a basic example that I had set up and uh, what I was able to do is that I created a room tag and I wanted to tag every room but, uh, with this information which is occupancy type area and occupancy load. Occupancy load is actually a calculated value uh, from area of the room minus the area of those filled regions that I have placed in the room. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is that I sometimes want to uh, subtract the uh, built-in furniture area from the actual room area. Um, so I could do that uh, by creating an extra parameter and then running a schedule and then doing calculate a value, but then this all is kind of constrained to a schedule and I wouldn't be able to uh, load it into a room tag, which uh, would have to be a shared parameter. So this is why I'm using Dynamo to, to do that. Um, so this is one of the main functionalities of it that it actually calculates let me just show you a quick example if I if I stretch stretch this out and then I went to my dynamo function and if I run it you can see that this updated uh, and it changed the area just because I made those food regions bigger so it actually checks for if there's a filled region inside of the room and then it subtracts that filled regions area from the actual room area which is uh, which saves me a bunch of time um, so there's that and then I also have this uh, dynamic function uh, filter out redundant rooms so if you see a redundant room uh, uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't include any calculations, it only performs the calculation on the one that's placed. Uh, so let's walk through uh, the Dynamo uh, function itself. So I'm doing this per floor and per view. So what view you're in and what, uh, and what floor you pick here is actually important. Uh, so you set your ground level and then I have a custom node made uh, that collects all the rooms on that level and then I have a couple other custom nodes. Uh, the next one, once I have all the rooms on that floor I filter out all the unplaced rooms. Uh, so once I have all the unplaced rooms um, you can see here that I have a get active view node plugged into it, into a Python node. So this is why I'm saying it's view specific. It actually looks at this view and collects all the filled regions uh, in that view and then it checks if those filled regions are inside of uh, any rooms and then it groups those together. So, so then I end up with three separate lists, uh, one with filled regions, and then one with rooms that those filled regions are inside of, and then the rest of the rooms. Uh, that's useful for me because I can, uh, I can run two separate operations on those rooms. So the rooms that don't have filled regions in them are the ones that I don't need to subtract any area from. So I can get uh, area straight out of those, and then send it to a list. And then for the rooms that uh, have filled regions inside of them. I'm grabbing those filled regions and I'm figure and I'm uh, pulling out a uh, filled region area out of it. And I cannot use just a regular. Uh, there's a node get area. It doesn't actually work in filled regions uh, because filled regions have a built-in parameter that calculates the area, which is not accessible uh, through a schedule or anything like that. So, um, I'm using Revit API to extract that. Um, so, I, once I have that area and the actual area of the room, I can subtract one from another and then get all the values pulled in together. And that will be my new area adjusted. So, here's what I'm doing here. I'm just pushing that into a parameter in Revit. Uh, so, these are my new area adjusted parameters. And then all I have to do to figure out the occupancy load is uh, divide occupancy type uh, divide area by occupancy type so this is what I'm doing here I'm, I'm pulling from all these rooms 
that I'm working with, I'm getting occupancy type parameter, and it comes through, um, if I pull in and watch, so all these come through as strings, and you can see them as, uh, with this prefix A, which is occupancy type, and then uh, square footage per person allowed. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually splitting those up, splitting those up at the dash, and then once I get that actual just the number, I'm using that to uh, have it divided by area, and then have area divided by that number, and then that is written back to Revit as an occupancy load parameter. So that um, I can schedule it here. So if I was to change this occupancy type to 15 and then rerun my schedule, you can see my occupancy load update automatically. So there it is. I think it's a pretty useful, uh, pretty useful little definition. Um, I'm gonna have make a post on my blog at archie-lab.net. Um, as soon as I have it cleaned up, obviously there's a bunch of places in this code, like over here, and I have like three consecutive Python nodes where I need to clean this thing up, um, maybe combine them into one larger Python node, um, or maybe I'll keep them separate, I'm not sure yet. Um, anyways, I'll try to clean this thing up, streamline it, uh, simplify it, and maybe try to figure out if there's any more things that I wanted to do. Uh, but for now, it seems to be working just fine. Uh, I hope it's going to save me a lot of time, and I hope it's going to save everyone else a lot of time. I'm going to have it posted on my blog as soon as it's ready. Um, email me if you have any questions. Follow me on uh, follow me on Twitter at arc underscore laboratory. Um, all right, thanks for following. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, uh, stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Thank you.